crime and punishment. Everybody in this world at one time or another commits a crime. The first time you drive one mile over the speed limit, you've committed a crime. The first time you don't come to a complete stop in an intersection, you've committed a crime. The person who cheats on his taxes, even a little bit, is committing a crime. The question is, how far will you push the limits of crime? Here's the bottom line. Does crime become your occupation? It's easy to understand the temptation of crime. You've seen all the money the DEA pulls off drug raids. Anybody who has looked at that for one minute and thought, damn, if I just had one of those stacks that's fallen under the influence of what makes people commit crimes, for that one moment, you took a step toward it. Now, take that step one step further by adding a guy who whispers in your ear, you want it? I can show you how to make it. In the streets, that guy is in your face all day. I've watched gangsters dump $400,000 onto a bed in a motel room. $100 bills took up the entire bed. This wasn't a movie set starring Demi Moore and Robert Redford. This was the real shit. I looked at that cash and thought, damn, these are just some brothers. They weren't no CEOs from Warner Brothers. These were just my homeboys. At the time, I had just gotten out of a four-year stint in the Army. I joined the military to do the right thing. After getting a girl pregnant in the 12th grade, I was in some hardcore infantry shit that preached the kill em all approach. Just pure gung-ho shit. I hated the military. And when I got out, I just wanted to be a DJ. I ended up working a government job, and at the end of the month, I got a check for $180 every week. After taxes. Fuck, my homeboys were driving Mercedes Benzes. I started rolling with them. I became Ice-T on the streets before I was Ice-T the rapper. I had a name, a Porsche, all this shit. But all I ever really wanted to do in life besides be a DJ was to be a pimp. I even named myself after a pimp, Iceberg Slim. But to be a good pimp, you have to be your best hoe. And pimping wasn't really about enough money. So my crew and I turned to hustling, insurance scams, burglary, jewelry heist, armed robbery, whatever. Once the money starts coming in, you're hooked. When I was hustling... I never clouded my mind with drugs. When you combine drugs with crime, you have a criminal who doesn't give a fuck. A guy who might have not have heard a person sober will now use force. The user needs that dough. Your survival becomes intertwined with your dependency. If drugs were legalized in the same way alcohol is, fewer crimes would be committed because so many crimes are directly related to illegal drugs. I don't believe anybody will ever be able to control any substance. Anything that a chemist can make will always be available, period. You'll never be able to control alcohol. You'll never be able to control heroin. You'll never be able to control crack. If crack were available right now through the American government, all the money they're using for drug enforcement could be used to create total awareness about what the drugs will do to you. Through ads and education, the government could raise user awareness. The money could also be spent on rehab so addicts wouldn't have to get on a six-month waiting list when they decided to dry out. So much violence follows drug use because users are always scrambling to get it. Everybody's using dirty needles, and the government just watches it happen. There has to be a reason our government does not want to legalize drugs. Somewhere somebody must be making money because I just don't believe they care that much about people. How can they be concerned about drugs when alcohol has the same effect on the body as crack? Now that alcohol is legal, you don't see people murdering each other over whiskey anymore. That war is gone. People need to understand that any substance available on earth will be obtained by the people and used by the people. All you can do is accept that fact and make life safer for everybody involved. Crime is like any other job. The more intelligent criminals get involved in more intelligent forms of crime, the more ignorant people are stuck on lower rungs like muggings and stick-ups. Give us your money is about as simple as crime comes. Burglars might have to use a tool or know how to disarm an alarm. You need to have some smarts. 
These guys will probably move up to fraud, paid arson, insurance fraud, credit card fraud, which is rampant at this point. A popular insurance scam in L.A. is the crack game or the forced accident. These guys are looking to get hit by news cars, which are generally insured. The person in the crack game car will attempt to hit the driver as he makes an illegal turn or doesn't come to a full stop. Even though they hit you, you are in the wrong, so you can get sued. In this game, the attorneys are crooked, the doctors are crooked, everybody knows what's going on. All of this drives up the insurance premiums for people, but what does the criminal care? He doesn't even have insurance. He's just getting paid. But who's the bigger crook here, the hustler or the respectable lawyer or doctor? Without them, there's no game. As you get deeper and deeper into crime and you watch your cash flow build, you eventually learn you're going to have to kill somebody. That's the dangerous part. The full-fledged career criminals have to play hardball. They can't view anything as off-limits or illegal. You enter a warp where you say, if I got to kidnap somebody, I got to kidnap them. If I got to kill them, I'll kill them. You can't at any point say, I don't want to do that. That's the only way you can survive full out with the criminal life and really make it big. If you start selling $10 bags of weed, that might get you a nice car. But if you want to get a real nice car, you have to start selling pounds. You want to get a house, you're going to have to start selling 10 or 20 pounds of weed. Once you hit this level, people know who you are. You've made yourself bigger and you become more of a target for the lowest form of criminal, the robber. So you might have to kill them to protect what you got. You also become intoxicated with the game of it all. The smart drug dealer isn't getting high off of his dope. He's getting high off of his cash flow. You not only employ a lot of people now, but you're accountable for a lot of people's money. Say there's a kid in South Central selling dope. If he's got a connection with the Colombians, he can't quit. The punk kids on the streets who help him sell can't have you quit either because the next man might not want to use them. The Colombians can't have you quit because you're moving too much dope for them. They'll put you in a coffin. You can't quit, so you get yourself into a jam where you just can't stop. Now that you're hustling, you've got a lot of overhead. You got a house you own. You got car bills. Before you got in the game, you could have lived off nothing. But now you need 15 G's a month just to keep the shit you got. That's why you see very rich people do very crazy things when they think they're going broke. You see them kill somebody in their family for the insurance money. They go to extremely scandalous and drastic measures not to go broke. I'm much more afraid of somebody who's rich and on the verge of going broke than somebody who's broke and trying to hustle a meal. But a criminal has to ask himself, do I want to kill somebody? Do I really want to go that far? Because eventually you'll have to go that far. Either somebody won't keep his word and you have to step to them, or word will get out on the street that you were screwed and the dude didn't have to pay. One way or another in crime, you end up having to get violent. That's what turned me off to crime. I never had it in me to go out and hurt anybody. I was the kind of criminal who wanted everybody to play by the rules. In other words, I was looking for honesty in crime. Crime is more addicting than any drug. Beating the system is the ultimate rush. You learn that as a kid. Stealing a cookie out of the cookie jar is just a thrill. You scored. There's just something about getting away with it. My crew excelled at jewelry heist. We started with picking the locks called trimming, then moved over to bashing, smashing the outside glass of jewelry stores, and taking the jewelry. That's why I got all these big cuts on my hands. We weren't pistol bashing. We would just show up unarmed. This way we were less likely to be shot at. When pistol bashing became more common, we moved into snatch and run. We walk into a jewelry store and ask to see expensive pieces and just start running. We wouldn't just pick any store. We'd already case the store that doesn't have guns. We park our car two blocks over and walk the escape route backwards. We wouldn't just run out not knowing where we were going. We'd hop a fence, shoot through an apartment building with the doors already jammed open in advance. Even if the store order had a gun hidden away, we were out of that store so fast. I mean, I mean, we were moving. 
Now, you might have to go to Nebraska to find a mall or a jewelry store with no armed security guard, but that's what you'll do. You'll find a slow town. You fly in on hot credit cards, rent two cars, get a return ticket, hit the store and jam out the front door, switch cars, drive to the airport and leave the car running. You're out of there. You've just committed a federal crime. The FBI can go after you, but the cops can't chase you because you've broken federal lines. Who are you? Where'd you come from? Nobody knows. By the time our crew disbanded, we were international. I was lucky because I knew when to say no, and that kept me out of a lot of trouble. Fortunately, the statute of limitation is gone by on all the crimes I committed. I'm also fortunate I never killed anybody, not that I know of. Sometimes a lot of bullets will fly, but it would be a damn big surprise if any of the bullets I shot ever hit somebody. It would wake me up and scare the shit out of me. Let's hope not. That'd be a whole nother book. Despite all my material wealth, I'd committed crimes for a number of years and hadn't gotten extremely rich. I bought my share of toys and my crew was well known in the underground L.A. But all of a sudden I started watching a lot of my boys go to jail and I knew I was ready to slow down and slack off. I hadn't gotten that much out of it, and now the boys I could really work with were gone. All these secondhand players were just running around. I looked at our crew and thought, who really got rich? None of us. We were able to sustain a fly lifestyle, real flash and all that, but there wasn't that much money. When I stopped, I had about $80,000 in cash and assets. The reason I totally stopped was the film Breaking. My boys told me, yo... You should do this, man. You got a chance. So I did it. I immediately went broke. I ran through the cash without even feeling it. I was still living at that speed, and I had to go through withdrawal. I really had to stop myself. My friends were still hustling, and they would come over and offer me money just to stay down. They wanted to see me make it out. One of my buddies told me, Ice, man. You need to do this movie, man. White people like you. You got a chance. In a way... It's a real sad statement because he's saying, I can't make it over there. They won't let me in. Crime is an equal opportunity employer. You don't need a college education. You don't have to be any special color. You don't need white people to like you. You're self-employed. As a result, criminals are very independent people. They don't like to take orders. There are no applications to fill out, no special dress codes. There's a degree of freedom in being a criminal, but you're always gambling with your freedom. You have to ask yourself, how much are you willing to risk of your freedom? Before you get into the game, you've got to know how you'll adapt in jail. How much risk will you take and where will you draw the line when it comes to jail? Now, some people can do jail time. Some people can just do time. 